Why does Death Stranding's terrain scan look so good? The way it glides across the environment, it just feels so smooth and alive. Have you ever asked yourself, what makes it look so good and how did it do it? Well, I did. In fact, I couldn't get these questions out of my head. In order to find out the answers, I had to recreate the effect on my own. What I discovered was not only fascinating, but revealed just how much thought went into this one small mechanic. So join me on this journey as we peel back the layers and uncover the secret behind one of Death Stranding's most iconic visual effect. I started with the most noticeable part of the effect and the thing that initially caught my attention. These pixel perfect scan lines that start near the player and spread over the terrain. At first, it looked like they were spreading in all directions, but while I was running across this open terrain with a wider camera angle, it became clear that they were spreading in the direction the player was facing at the start of the scan, with an angle of approximately 120 degrees. After around 300 scans, I finally got an idea of how to create these lines. I could make a full screen effect and use the depth buffer to get the distance of each pixel from the camera. Then I can split that distance into sections. Finally, I can show only a single row of pixels in each section which should form a line. Of course, this idea will cover only the base of the effect, but it looked like a good starting point, so I jumped into Unity, created a new shader and material, and set up a full screen renderer feature. Now, I know it seems broken, but this means that the full screen feature is actually working. It's currently black because I output a solid black color for every pixel, just to confirm that the full screen feature is active. Now that I know that it's active, I can sample the color texture and visualize it on screen. In full screen render features, the camera color is provided through the blit texture, so I've added a code snippet that samples it and outputs the color. And here's the result. We can now see the original camera output. I know, it's not much, but with that out of the way, I can start implementing the idea for the scan lines. First, I need to sample the depth buffer. Fortunately, this is really easy since Unity provides this helper sample scene depth function, which you can access in the shader if you included this file that comes with the universal rendering pipeline. Let's visualize the results to confirm they're working. Well, Everything is completely black again. What's going on? Why isn't this working? Well, it turned out that the scene camera has a huge far plane distance, which resulted in all pixels close to the camera being almost fully black. Let's fix that. Finally, it's looking much better. There's something appealing in visualizing depth. I don't know what it is, it, it just feels good. After flying around the scene a bit and enjoying the view, it was time to continue with the implementation of the scan lines. The next thing I did was split the depth into chunks by dividing the depth by the distance between the lines and using only the decimal part of the result. Well, the result is a bit trippy, but it looks like it's working. If I now reduce the visible part of each category to a very small amount, it should look like a line. There we go. Behold the scan lines. My initial happiness quickly disappeared as I noticed this one big issue. Whenever I move the camera, the lines are moving as well and this is not what I want. This is because the depth buffer contains distances of the pixel from the camera, so every time the camera moves, those distances change. To fix this, I need to use the distance of the pixels from the origin of the scan and not from the camera. For that, I would need to know the world position of the pixel, but how do I get the world position when I only have the depth values from the depth buffer? Luckily, the famous Ben Golus already tackled the issue and wrote the shader graph solution for it, and it's quite brilliant. It uses the depth of the pixel and its screen space position to calculate the position of the pixel relative to the camera. Then, since we know the world position of the camera, we can get the world position of the pixel from it. So clever. And here's the code that implements just that. Unity has helper functions for transforming the position from view space to world space, so I use them to simplify the code a bit. Now that I know the world position of each pixel, I can get its distance from the origin of the scan 
and use that distance for creating the lines, instead of using the direct value from the depth buffer. Let's see how this looks. Finally, the lines aren't moving with the camera. They're crisp and sharp and bend around the geometry perfectly, just like in Death Stranding. But I may be celebrating too early because there's another issue and it's a big one. The lines are behaving quite funky around the grass and foliage. They're broken and almost invisible. But in the game, they're so crisp and perfect. How do they do it? I thought maybe it was due to aliasing, so I tried increasing the anti-aliasing quality and switching between different solutions, but that didn't help. I tried tweaking the width of the lines in hope of getting a better result, but that didn't make much of a difference. I started getting a bit desperate. Everything I tried just wasn't working. I started thinking that maybe it wasn't the implementation that was incorrect. Maybe it was the approach. I went back and deeply analyzed the original effect. While zooming in on a line, I noticed how nicely it follows the shape of an object. It looks so clean, like an outline. Then it hit me. What if this is actually an outline effect? I started researching different ways of creating full screen outline effects and stumbled upon this article from Steven Sell. It shows an interesting technique for creating outlines by using something called the Sobel operator. Basically, what this effect does is sample the depth of a pixel and its four neighboring pixels. Then it calculates the difference between the depth of each neighbor and the center pixel and adds all differences together. If the total sum is small, it means that the surface is consistent and that we most likely aren't on the edge. But in contrast, if the sum is large, it indicates an abrupt change and that we're probably on the edge of the surface. I followed the paper and implemented the effect. As you can see, the resulting outlines are crisp, clean and perfectly follow the shape of the objects. But they appear everywhere. I need a way to show them only at specific distances. Also, since I'm back to using the depth buffer again, the outline changes whenever the camera changes position. Luckily, I've already solved these issues before. All I need to do is use the world position instead of the raw depth, calculate the distance from the origin of the effect, and split the distance values into segments so that I can only show a line from each segment. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see how it looks. Yes! Finally, perfect looking lines that go smoothly even around the grass and foliage. Wait, why are they all going in one direction instead of spreading from the source of the effect? This is strange. Well, it turns out I accidentally used only the X coordinate of the world position while copy pasting the code from the previous solution. And guys, never copy paste. Let's pretend that this never happened and see how the lines are looking. There we go, those perfect clean lines spreading across the scene. They perfectly follow the shape of objects, even on the grass and foliage. Well, this wasn't so hard, it only took me like 4 days to implement. With the lines sorted out, I quickly restricted the effect to be visible only at a certain distance from the origin. Also, I've added the direction of spreading to the effect, so I can mask out the parts that were outside a specific angle threshold. However, while the lines look good, the overall effect doesn't. I needed to go back and further analyze what makes their effect look so much better. Here are a couple of details I've noticed. The first and obvious one is that I'm missing the color gradient at the edge of the effect. This gives the impression that the scan is pushing through the terrain, almost as if it's fighting with the friction. Secondly, the area beneath the edge of the scan is darkened. This is vital because it increases the visibility of the effect by adding more contrast with the environment. So let's start with the edge gradient. Based on my struggle with creating the lines, I decided to tackle this one strategically. First, I calculated the distance where the edge gradient should start and compared it with the current scan range to create a mask that will control the visibility of the edge gradient. If the value of the mask is 1, the edge gradient will be visible while if the value is 0, it will be hidden. Then 
I applied a bit of smoothing for a softer blend. Finally, I used the distance from the edge as a blending factor between two gradient colors. This turned out really nice, and let's see it combined with the lines. Well, it's getting there, but it really needs the darkening of the ground beneath it. My approach for this is pretty similar. I'm going to use the distance from the edge of the effect to control the darkening of the color. However, the most important step here is the blending of the colors. Blending is done by using the minimum of the base color and the blend color, and then interpolating between that minimum color and the base one. This kind of blending is fittingly called the darken blend. You can find other blending operators by inspecting the code behind the blend shader graph node. I'll leave the link to it in the description. And here's how it looks. By exposing the darkening color, I can control the final look and intensity of the effect. If I now mix it with everything else, we can see the improvement it makes in the final composition. I'm starting to like the look of the effect already, but I feel like there is still something missing. I just have no idea what it is. In search of answers, I went back to playing the game and after a while I noticed a lot more things. It's interesting how each time I look at the same effect, I discover new details I haven't seen previously. And that's only because of the experience I went through while creating the previous details myself. The first thing I noticed was that the effect doesn't end so abruptly at the edges as mine does. They've applied some softening to have a smoother transition. It's subtle but nice. Now, the second thing was really hard to notice, but if you look closely at the scan lines, you might be able to spot it. Did you see it? Yeah, I didn't either at first, but let's see it in slow motion. Here, it's clearly visible. The first scan line in the effect is actually white. It isn't blue like the others. This provides a feeling of the scan progressing through the environment. The third thing I've completely overlooked before is that there is actually a dark circle that appears around the player at the start of the effect. It's clearly visible in those wider camera angles. This provides a feeling of a stronger loading phase at the beginning of the effect. I couldn't notice anything else, so I went back to Unity and started implementing these three changes. I will start with the dark circle since it seems like the easiest one. And it turned out to be really simple. I created a mask based on the maximum distance from the player at which the circle should be visible and then applied blending based on the distance from the player. Also, the circle should be visible only outside of the scan effect, so I used the inverse of the angle mask to only show the pixels outside the scan effect. Next, I tackled the softening of the edges. First, I tried applying the falloff to the current angle mask so that it looked softer at the edges, but I simply couldn't find the right falloff value. It was either too strong or too soft. So, I decided to use a different approach. I've defined an angle threshold from which the softening will start and a falloff parameter that will tweak the blending between the threshold and the edge of the effect. This gave me more control of the effect so I could get that perfect soft falloff I wanted. And here's the comparison with the previous state. It's subtle but definitely an improvement. The final thing left to do was to apply the white color to the first scan line. Here I'm visualizing the first line in red, just to confirm that it's working. Well, I have to say this was surprisingly easy. Wait, why is there no first line colored when the distance matches the line interval? Hmm, I guess this should fix it now. Nice. Now it's visible even if the distance matches the line interval. Wait, why are there two visible lines now? This doesn't seem right. I guess I approached this way too confidently. Okay, I finally solved it. Since the lines appear at the start of each interval, I had to seal the current scan range to get to the end of the last category and then subtract one to get the distance of the first line. Let's just confirm that it's working. There it is, only one line marked as the first one, and if I set the distance to the multiplier of the line interval, it still works correctly. Perfect. Let's see all the facts together. Personally, this doesn't look too bad to me, at least in the static form. 
I think it's time now to animate the spreading. But if I've learned anything in this journey, it's to analyze the source effect first, so let's go back to playing the game again. The effect starts from the player's position and spreads across the terrain. At first, it seemed like it starts at a certain distance from the player, but upon frame-by-frame -frame inspection, I noticed that it starts from the player position, but it's really transparent until it reaches a certain distance, then it suddenly increases visibility. Also, it moves quite fast at first, but slows down when it becomes visible, before finally bursting out at high speed. This is all intentionally combined to provide that juicy feel of buildup before bursting into the environment. Additionally, the dark circle around the player quickly disappears when the effect starts spreading rapidly, adding an additional sense of power to the effect. The final part I focused on was the slowing down of the spreading. After the initial burst and quick spreading of the effect, it starts to incrementally wind down and reduce the visibility. It doesn't end up abruptly, it slowly lowers speed and opacity. Based on the analysis, I've created this simple controller that will be in charge of controlling the spread and opacity of the effect by updating the properties of the material. For easier management, I've split the internal state of the controller into three main states. Each state has its own duration and logic in updating the current spread speed and opacity of the effect. The first state is the spawn state. It starts from the player's position and with an initial velocity. It then reduces the spread velocity and increases the visibility of the effect over time. The next state is the preform state, which basically does nothing. It just keeps the current velocity and visibility for a certain duration. Even though it doesn't change anything, it's crucial for that feel of build-up before the expansion. The final state is the expansion state. It starts by quickly increasing the current velocity towards the maximum one, which it keeps for a small duration before it starts to slow down and fade out the effect. Maybe I could have split this state into two states. One for the expansion and one for the slowing down, but I implemented it like this and it didn't seem like the change was worth the effort. After a bit of tweaking the values, I ended up with something I was content with. You should be able to see the quick spawn of the effect, followed by a small preworm phase before it quickly bursts into the environment. I think it doesn't look that bad, what do you think? Let me know in the comments if I missed something obvious. Of course, the original scan effect contains the additional icons spawning above the terrain, providing in-depth information to the player about the difficulty of traversing across it. However, this would require a video of its own and we've already covered so much in this one. Though if that's something you'd be interested in, make sure to leave a like to let me know. And with that, I've completed this little visual exploration and can finally go and play the game in peace. You can find links to the controller code and the shader in the description, along with all other links I could find useful while recreating this effect. Thank you for your time and good luck with your creations.